Hey there everyone, my name is Carl with the BRS Integration Lab and I'm going to give you an overview of adding virtual machines and backing them up into Avmar 6.0. So you can see here on my desktop I have Avmar console launched and I'm actually in the administration uh, view. In here on the left hand side you can see multiple domains that have been set up and if you're familiar with our BSG 69013 environment um, these should uh, resonate with you. Um, so the question comes about how do I actually discover my virtual center within Avamar? Well, it's rather easy actually. If you select the uh, root of your uh, domain tree and then right click and choose new client. And then from the client types you can pick them from the drop down whether it's a VMware image proxy or a VMware virtual center. And then you get a window that looks somewhat like this. Now I've already got one discovered so I can take a peek at that here and you can see it's the fully qualified domain name if I choose edit client you'll see the fully qualified domain name the port and a root user this user user has access to the virtual center okay so once that's done and your virtual uh, center is discovered you'll want to um, select the uh, root which is the actual uh, domain and choose import multiple clients and once this dialog pops up you can start to browse your uh, virtual environment and you can see here in the background I actually have mine open so you can see uh, the structure is going to be identical in Avamar because we basically display the exact same tree as that you would see in virtual center and you can change the views to virtual machines and tablets or host and clusters now if I select this show subdomain and virtual machines I should get a full list of virtual machines that I can import and uh, in 6.0 the uh, machines that are already added would be grayed out and the machines that are ready to import would be black so you can see here there are a couple of grays in the in the mix here and very simply I could select multiple VMs and uh, I can enable change block tracking if I wish and then I would just um, select all and click OK and those virtual machines would be imported into um, the respective domain now obviously we've already done this for you so let's move right along then once I have my virtual center discovered I want to uh, create a data set to actually specify the plugin and the target source of that uh, virtual machines uh, backup and when I say target source I'm talking about whether it be Avamar or data domain because in 6.0 you're probably aware that virtual machines can be backed up using Avamar to data domain now we have quite a few data sets specified here let's take a peek at one this one says VM image data set and you can see here under source data the kind of plugins that are specified all virtual disks for both Linux clients and Windows clients no inclusions or exclusions and you can see that this utilized change block list equals true for both um, operating systems so that means the change block tracking is enabled let's move this out a little bit more this one says image data set but no change block tracking and you can see red highlighted says false now here's a data set to DD it says all virtual disks DDR index equals 1 and DDR equals true and change block tracking is also true whenever you discover a data domain in Avamar it is given an index ID so the first one is obviously 1, 2, 3 and so forth let's take a look at the edit on this one actually so I can drill down into it you can see here that the plugins are entered explicitly all disks and if we come to options and take a look at say Linux VM image you can see that this one says use change block tracking to increase performance and the data domain system is available for you in the drop down and we have two in our environment so those are both available to you here so that's configuring the data set. Now the next thing you want to do is uh, configure a schedule and a retention. 
Um, you don't have to do that. You can choose the defaults if you wish. And then um, the next thing logically would be to create a group. So let's go ahead and click navigation and policy. Then you mouse down to in your tree to where you want to put these uh, groups. And uh, of course we have some groups already configured. Let's take a look at this virtual machines one. It says VC demo. So at a glance I can tell that there are two virtual machines being protected by this uh, by this group right here. Um, but let's edit this group and take a closer look. Okay, so you have the name VC demo. It is enabled. It has a data set, VM image data set, and that's the first one we took a look at. So we know it's going to Abamar as opposed to DD. Its schedule is default. Its retention is default. And the two virtual machines I talked about are right here. Now, if you wanted to, um, you could simply import um, multiple VMs from VC, like we did the previous step, and put them in a uh, domain. And then those would be available to simply add here. So you can see I could add these additional two machines if I wanted to add to these two that are already being protected. Now, in order to do a VM image backup, or in fact a file level recovery, you use proxies. And proxies are prepackaged OVA files that uh, Avamar ships with, and those are available to you on the documents and downloads page. Now, every Avamar utility node runs a web service, and um, if you specify, if you put in the name of the Avamar utility node in the browser, it'll bring up a uh, page which has documents and downloads, and in those documents and downloads, uh, the proxy files, and you can see here we have two proxies. Uh, enabled. One as the name um, denotes here is for file level recovery and the other is set to backup Windows clients. Now with respect to the proxy it's one size fits all in the sense that one proxy image will back up Linux and Windows VMs. However the difference is you must when you're configuring the proxies specify what type of um, machines those will back up. So you get the option um, in your proxies to specify whether they're uh, for Windows or Linux. But the process starts the same. It's just during a configuration wizard that you would uh, specify. And you can see here we're, we're back into the account management, back into my um, domains. And you can see here if someone set up an FLR group which has this file level proxy. And then I have this Windows uh, proxy. <clears throat> It is a Linux um, image, don't forget it's a CentOS proxy, very lightweight, but it backs up Windows machines. And if you were to right click and edit, say, this proxy, you can see the access that this proxy has been given to with respect to the data stores within my virtual center. So here you can pick and choose which data stores you want this proxy to be able to access. So this way you can sort of limit um, the proxy's access to various data stores. You might want to choose a specific data store to build all your VMs and then you would just obviously select the box to grant access to that proxy to it. Okay, so once you have um, all of the groups set up and configured, it's as simple as right clicking on your group and choosing backup group now. Now you can see the backup for this group is initiated and I can come over here to my um, activity monitor and we can watch the process here as it uh, unfolds. Now when I give a demo I typically like to have my virtual center up in the background because as activity happens in Av Avamar you can show the corresponding activity in your task list. So here we go, look you're creating a virtual machine which says create the snapshot and let's uh, move this window up a wee bit so we can have um, both the same. Creating the snapshot. And don't forget there was two um, clients, BSG69111 and BSG69111. Uh, now we're removing the snapshot and QC uh, blocks, which was the change block uh, tracking. 
or a snapshot, remove snapshot. So it's quite good to have both, um, especially for customers who are very uh, familiar with v VMware, because they can actually see the tasks as they occur um, via that proxy. And this is my second um, virtual machine. Again, QC blocks, change block tracking is enabled on this group. And we're taking advantage of that. So change block tracking basically means uh, Avamar will look at a change block tracking file and that is a log of everything that has changed in the backup since the in the image since the last backup. And therefore we only back up those change blocks. So obviously this means a very small backup, a very short backup and a very um, network light backup. So it's ideal actually to have that enabled and take full advantage of it. So you can see here this image, this Windows image is uh, 20 gigs and because change block tracking is enabled it's only taking about 39 seconds to back this one up. Looks like our uh, removal of snapshot happened in the background so that uh, second client is just about done. This VM is slightly bigger and it has completed. Okay, so you can see there the progress of both machines create snapshot and remove snapshot. Now we know our VMs are protected. Okay, so say we want to come back in and we want to do a restore. Let's go to backup and restore. Navigate to our group, which is virtual machines. And you can see here I have um, my two Windows clients in this group. And if I select for restore, I can take a look at all the available backups that are there for this client today. Let's just do a refresh to make sure we're current. So this here is my um, VC demo group. And a yellow globe uh, means that uh, there are viable backups for that particular client. And down here in the tree, then you'll notice we have two separate options. This option here on the left is for image restores. So if I wanted to restore the entire image of that machine, I could simply click this, right click, and choose restore now. Then you'll get various options. You get restore the machine to its original, uh, restore to original machine. And you can see that this is a like for like restore. You can also choose to a different uh, to restore this to a different virtual machine, and then you could configure destination, put in the information that you want, or lastly, you can restore to a new virtual machine altogether, and again configure configure the destination. You would just browse to the um, machine name and specify data center and so on and so forth. Another great feature about the image backup is the ability to do a granular level restore. And with Windows, we're using that um, file level proxy. And if you recall, that proxy was enabled for this group. So you would check off the um, little folder icon here. Now, I do have to warn you, if you're giving a demo to a customer, this may take about 20 seconds to actually go out and um, expand out the tree of available files within Avamar. So just uh, be aware of that. So when it returns, as you can see here, you'll get um, a full sort of Windows Explorer type view. And you can drill into documents and settings or wherever your particular files are. You know, and if you've got if you got to do this demo, it's probably a good idea to sort of put a file on the desktop prior to running it. But uh, as you can see, it's it's very simple to just come in here and select a particular file. Let's see if we've got anything on the um, administrator's desktop worth worth restoring. 
No, I just have a link. Anyway, um, it's as simple as restoring, um, selecting the link, and um, expanding out the folder, or choosing the folder, choosing restore now, and then you can specify what image is selected, restore everything to its original location or to a different location. And once you choose every, restore everything to original location, it'll tell you it's going to overwrite the files so you want to continue. And then you'll have to give a username and password for that particular VM. So I'm not going to go ahead and finish this, but it's as simple as adding username and password, clicking OK, and then the job completes. OK, that's uh, VM image backup and protection in a nutshell. I hope you found this uh, demo useful, and uh, thanks very much for your attention.